with yep. Nipsey, uh, talking more about Nipsey. Um, do you believe um, that he, you know, answer yes or no if you can, that his death may have something to do with his plans to build up and um, take over the area? Like he said, he went to buy back the whole neighborhood. You think it could have been a, could have been a correlation between that, in your opinion? That's what that's what made me scared for him. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past it because. You know, I'm of the freedom of speech. You know, I'm of... the other side of the non-disclosure agreements. The agreements. go ride my boat today on the beach and then park the boat and then jump up and go out to the mountains and go skiing all at the same in the same day so all the celebrities the wealthy want to move there but what opened the door for me was i started i was spending like 10 to twenty thousand dollars a month advertising in these low rider magazines right to represent my business because i manufactured do a bunch of different things so i started noticing other businesses were opening up in route to my business right so mm. when you own a business, you have to be very strategic because competition will open up right across the street from you. Yeah. So in 2002, well, I opened my business in early, like, 91, 92, something like that. By 2002, it was a lot of shops there all over the place. So I expanded to Palmdale, California. But the reason why I, how I noticed gentrification was I found out years later there was this new company called SpaceX that moved into my neighborhood. Uh-oh. This wealthy guy sold his thing called uh, PayPal, you know what I'm saying, named Elon Musk, and moved into the middle of a black neighborhood called Hartheim. And the reason how I figured something was wrong was because all of a sudden, you know, the city was cool with us. They didn't give us no problems. But now all of a sudden we get tow truck is getting tickets. The police is pulling all my trucks over, giving all these guys tickets. They going up into the barber shops and giving them tickets. They they all of a sudden they taking people's houses because they didn't pay their taxes. It's like, what the hell? What's going on? You know, I realized that somebody making a move on us. Mm. Somebody had mentioned to me, they said, my, one of my, somebody mentioned to me that they saw uh, Steven Spielberg put an offer in to buy the post office. So now I'm, I'm into real estate in the major way. So my point is, I realized that they were making a move to take out Los Angeles. And I had always heard rumors of Los Angeles that they were going to make, uh, by a certain time, they were going to get rid of all the African-Americans out of L.A. Mm. I always heard that California was going to be for the wealth. So I predicted, I said, by 21, we shouldn't be no more black people here because everybody gone. But fast forward the story, getting back to the gentrification piece, this is what's going on right now. When we realized that SpaceX had moved in, I know a business needs to, they bring in a lot of employees, so that means they're going to want those houses around that corporation so whenever a corporation comes in they cut a deal with the city the city is the one who invited them most likely so they cut a deal with the city the city said we're going to do this we'll probably get rid of all the blacks by 2020. someone said that was called vision 2020. i think mm -hmm. they probably mentioned that or something like that they would they would bring in all these people to work with them on this thing called vision 2020 but what that really was they wanted all the blacks out of la by 2020. but when i realized elon musk was in town and what he was doing we've been going back and forth for years i told all my buddies all those tilt truck guys to start buying all the houses and all the buildings around that shopping around that that facility because i know once the business owns once they acquire like 60 percent of the real estate they have the right to go to the city and say hey uh why is this, this business here or why is this college here why is this black hbcu here in the middle of a white neighborhood we don't want that here what my children can't go there. feel me wow so yeah what? go ahead bro. no no no. one interesting story you were telling us at the um at the convention kind of tied into hip-hop but also what we're kind of talking exactly about right now is the story that you talked about when you talked to the late great nipsey hustle but rest in peace nipsey hustle and what he had going on a very populated famous street slawson avenue and he had the marathon storm what was going on over there and how that kind of tied into exactly what you're talking about right now. Can you share with the people what you talked about with the late Nipsey Hussle and exactly what you thought or what exactly what was going on over there on Slauson Ave and the play they were moving on with the Marathon Store and that, that outlet and that um that development over there? 
a marathon was under was on the uh, street. It was off of Slauson and Crenshaw Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Boulevard and Slauson are like the Black Wall Streets. There's a lot of black businesses on there in Wall Street. And a mile up the hill from the marathon walking distance is the wealthiest black community in America called Park, California. So that is the most gentrified area in Los Angeles, pretty much in the United States. So they were low, they were secretly building that train under Crenshaw Boulevard. So I would talk to Nipsey at Simply Wholesome Restaurant. That's I don't know if y'all familiar with Simply Wholesome. That's like mm -hmm. the, the healthy restaurant in LA. That's like where all the celebrities hang out at. You know, we sit out there and have business meetings on the patio and all that. So you would always see y'all gotta next time y'all in LA, y'all gotta go there. But Simply Wholesome, they shoot that movie the TV show Unsecured here sometimes. Oh, okay, dope. So we would be sitting out on the patio and I, they started selling my book. And then Nipsey Hussle comes out with my book. He like, look, you know, he didn't know I knew Dr. Sabi. And he, we started talking about real estate. And he's asking, he thinking about buying that building because I've been knowing him since the, you know, the lowrider days. You know, he would always come up there with his buddies about getting a, a lowrider for a video or something like that. What kind of car we build? But my point was, so I was telling him if he going to buy the marathon, which was something else back then. I said, you can't just move in a gentrified area and think you're going to clean up the building and throw some paint on the wall, you know, and start selling stuff. You got to make it match the rest of the community because they finna gentrify this whole area. So he already knew about the initiative to buy back all that real estate in that area. You know, when I took, when I found out about that train going to Prince, I started telling all my car buddies, y'all need to buy as much of this real estate as possible because all these black billionaires are doing it. So we need to buy it as well. So Nipsey said, he started singing the same song. Okay, well, I'm gonna buy my neighborhood back. And I'm like, dude, that you that that area where he's where the marathon was, it's the hood on the corner. But when you start walking in the neighborhood, them houses seven, eight hundred thousand for a two bedroom, you know? Then you get up to the top of the mountain, you're talking about one of my buddies, he invited President Obama over his house and they had a fundraiser at his house. You can walk from Marathon up to his 15,000 square foot mansion on the top of the hill looking at the Hollywood sign. Ain't the Beverly Center like right there too? I know we went there right from there. The Beverly Center? No, the Beverly Center is in Beverly Hills or something like that. Oh, okay. I know we drove there from there when they're bad. Yeah, the, the Baldwin Hill Crenshaw Mall. Okay. Is the street, and that's in the news as well. That was owned by a brother as well, and they've been making a play on him. You know, but I told I told him uh, he really needs to tear that building down and go up with it and put some uh, commercial real estate on top. I'm sorry, residential on top, commercial on the bottom, because that's what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So I would like to talk to him because he was pushing. You know, I'm fighting gentrification down the street in Lamar Park, and the gentrifiers were starting to connect with all the hip hop rappers. So I started. I would coach all these cats and tell them what they asking you to do. I don't know if you remember they had he had a relationship with the city. Yeah. yeah. He was working with the city where they was trying to get him to push that vision 2020. And I was telling him what that really meant. You know what I'm saying? We had some deep discussions, but he got the picture of he wanted to buy all his real estate. But my point was they was trying to they built a train under the bottom of Crenshaw Boulevard, which is walking distance to the marathon. Crenshaw and Sloss in that corner. They built a train under there. And they wasn't opening it. And I was telling everybody that train wasn't for us. You know what I'm saying? That train is not for us, y'all. They finna gentrify this area. So it's important that we buy up all the real estate around this thing. Because that that corner, man, that real estate worth that, that's like a million dollars for a little two-bedroom right now, right there in that area. All up and down Crenshaw. It's just crazy. Wow. With yeah. Nipsey, uh talking more about Nipsey, um, do you believe? Um, that he, you know, answer yes or no if you can. That his death may have something to do with his plans to build up and um take over the area, like he said, he wanted to buy back the whole neighborhood. You think it could have been, been a correlation between that, in your opinion? That's what that's what made me scared for him. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him because you're talking about the wealthiest neighborhood of undervalued. You can go to you can go to SpaceX. It was five minutes up Crenshaw Boulevard. So they wanted that area. And when that happened, I already told Nipsey, you can't be talking too much about that because right. you're bringing too much positive energy to an area that every time it comes on the news, they talk about people dying and getting murdered and carjackings. And all of that brings the property value down. You know what I mean? 
whenever you see all that crazy stuff in the news, mm -hmm. I call it uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, warfare economic. What do you call it? <laughs> Something warfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the word too. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, they use that to push the property values down in black neighborhoods. Right. Disaster economics. They call it disaster economics, and that's what pushes all the property values down in the neighborhood. So when you're coming in, you're saying, "Hey, well, we want to we want to sell our house. You know, I think we can get about five. They're like, "Oh, well, you know, the appraiser's telling you, "Oh no, some people got murdered at the corner." Blah blah blah. Drive by shootings, all these liquor stores. You probably get two twenty. Well, I'm like, well, I told my people. When they do that, you make sure you let them know that SpaceX is up the street. Elon Musk don't map, don't mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's the living wage company where people making three, four hundred thousand. And that's what kind of like hell people. I don't know if y'all are familiar, but Elon Musk, he just he got mad because they couldn't get black people out of hard time out of that area fast enough. So he got mad and left. Y'all hear about that? No. Yeah, so you Google that, pull it up. He got mad and moved out of hard time. He moved to Texas. And he went out there with a vengeance. They just taking people's houses, just building like crazy. But from an investment standpoint, I always tell people, you know, we got to stop looking for real estate just because it got granted and, and a swimming pool in the backyard or a nice closet. We got to start moving in neighborhoods where Elon Musk just moved in. So I'm buying something across the street, if that makes sense. You know, I want to be in walking distance from that neighborhood because the property value is going to skyrocket within the next couple of years. Just on mention that he's thinking of moving to guard or to this area will make property values jump up 30%. By the time a store actually gets there, that house will jump from a two hundred thousand dollars to all of a sudden it'll be worth two million dollars. Mm -hmm. So us as a people, we gotta stop looking to buy houses just because it looks like we want it to look. We gotta buy I don't I would take a raggedy two bedroom house that's falling down as long as it's by SpaceX or or Tesla, or what do you call it? Facebook, Instagram, any one of these billion dollar corporations, Pilot Perry Studios. Like when I first mm -hmm. came to I started picking up properties around Tyler Perry Studios, and they were like, You're crazy. That's the hood. You know, Bankhead, all of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all seen that. Uh, uh, TI had announced that he, he showed on his Instagram that he was building. Those yeah. houses. That was one of the most powerful moves I've seen the rapper make in years, y'all. I mean, I really got excited when I saw that. L elaborate on that. I spit white like a clan mask. And I'm a hustler. I could stand out on the beach and sell sandbags. Some things can last, but this ain't just a podcast. This is Sam Ant and Oak Godcast. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side, and you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side, and you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Go gang.